B, attack bomber, number 20, Model B. Manufactured for the United States Army by the Douglas Aircraft Corporation. It is equipped with two powerful air-cooled engines, armor plating, excellent heavy armament, and carries a crew of three at speeds attained by some of the fastest pursuit planes. To review the extensive use of this series to date, it was originally designed as both an attack bomber and a night fighter, and was called the DB-7. This export version was enthusiastically received by the RAF and was called the Boston when used as an attack bomber and the Havoc when converted into a night fighter. The Royal Air Force has consistently praised this plane for its excellent offensive and defensive power. Today, with continued improvements, the series is designated as the A-20 by the United States Army. When in the service of the Navy and the Marine Corps, it is called the BD-1 and is used as an attack bomber and a photographic reconnaissance plane. Now let's completely identify the A-20B by the WEP system, emphasizing certain characteristics common only to this plane. The wing is the first feature to discuss, and we see that it is technically a mid-wing monoplane with dihedral, but the wing is actually shoulder high. That is, only a blister-type cockpit enclosure protrudes above the wing. Notice that the dihedral is very slight and that it starts at the root of the wing and slopes evenly up to the tips. From this angle, in describing the shape of the wing, we see that there is a straight leading edge with almost pointed tips and sharply tapered trailing edges. Remember the triangular shape of this wing. It should be easy to recognize. Another point to analyze is that the A-20B has twin engines mounted underslung in the wing. They are easily identified as a radial type by their round cowlings. Notice one point here. In most head-on angles of observation, they will appear equal to the size of the fuselage. Also, the engine nacelles are quite long and large in proportion to the size of the plane and taper to a point a noticeable distance back of the wing's trailing edge. This is an excellent clue to remember. Long and large nacelles underslung in the wing. Now a final point in analyzing the engines. The landing gear wheels fold up into the nacelles and covering doors close automatically, obscuring them from view. A fully retractable landing gear. The third feature of the WEP system to discuss is the fuselage. And you can see that it is a slab-sided type, narrower than it is thick. However, at most angles and distances, it will appear to be a conventional fuselage shape. There is a bombardier station in the nose and a blister-type cockpit enclosure which is partially covered. It begins just ahead of the wing's leading edge and terminates at the rear gunner's position. This forms a noticeable bulge above the wing and is a very distinctive feature to remember in identifying the A-20B. In analyzing the tail, we instantly see that it is very prominent, the entire tail assembly being placed on top of the fuselage. It has a very high fin with a tapered leading edge a slightly curved top and a tapered trailing edge. This is the best clue to identify the A-20 series. Next, the tail planes. They are placed at the juncture of the fin and the fuselage and have marked dihedral. At times, this will be an important clue. When seen from this angle, the elevator surfaces have tapered leading edges curved tips, and slightly curved trailing edges, which at a distance will appear to be tapered. Now, with this knowledge of the plane's appearance, 
Let's pick out certain clues to identify the A20B in various angles of flight. Remember that under varying conditions of observation, you are not expected to see all of the characteristics of an aircraft. You must be able to identify a plane by whatever clues are visible from your viewpoint. First, from this angle, you can see that it appears to be a high-wing monoplane with dihedral. But remember the term shoulder high. For here, it is a mid-wing monoplane with that blister-type cockpit enclosure above the wing. Next, notice the engines. Underslung in the wing with the round cowlings indicating that they are a radial type. Now, in this position, observe first the extremely long nose, which extends well beyond the engines. Then the very high single tail, which will be seen at any reasonable distance. As the plane moves away, notice those engines, very large in proportion to the plane's size, with the nacelles extending beyond the wing's trailing edge. At this long range, you can instantly see the long nose, the high single tail, well above the fuselage, and now, even the triangular shape of the wing. Its identity is certain. It's an A-20B. Here, with more time, observe in detail the surface of the wing. It has a straight leading edge, almost pointed tips, and sharply tapered trailing edges. In this position, let's study a secondary characteristic. Notice that blister-type cockpit enclosure, which begins just ahead of the wing's leading edge, and terminates in the rear gunner's position. It forms a noticeable bulge above the wing and is another good clue to remember. Here at this distance, the plane is recognized immediately as a mid-wing type. The cockpit enclosure is hardly noticeable, except for that slight protrusion over the wing. So the important clues to identity at this angle are, first, the long nose beyond the engines, and that outstandingly high single tail. As you can see, there is a fully retractable landing gear. The main wheels fold up into the engine nacelles, and the nose wheel folds into the fuselage. In discussing the tail section, notice first that there is dihedral in the tail planes. This will usually be a secondary clue. However, at this angle, the tail planes will appear to be small auxiliary wings connected to the cockpit enclosure. This is a very good clue to identify an A-20 type from a head-on angle. Ordinarily, the tail fin will be the best clue because of its size and shape. It has tapered leading and trailing edges with a slightly curved top. Here, the elevator surfaces, usually difficult to observe completely, have tapered leading edges, curved tips, and slightly curved trailing edges. And so the A-20B has been identified for you by the WEF system. And wherever and whenever it is encountered, remember this thumbnail description. Wings. A mid-wing monoplane with the wing shoulder high. Engines. Two very large radial-type engines mounted underslung with nacelles extending behind the wing. Fuselage. A definitely long nose and a partially covered cockpit enclosure. Tail. An extremely high tail well above the fuselage.